welcome back. I've spoken about framing and priming in different videos in the past. I think I've had a video that's dedicated to both framing and priming. But I'm going to talk about priming today, and I'm also going to talk about a study that shows just how easy it is to prime individuals and just how much priming we might consume in a day or just how much we might be primed throughout any given day. So just to refresh your memory, priming is the insertion of judgments or feelings or the bringing about of questions regarding an individual or a concept uh, without explicitly saying it. So example, office setting, this is the one that I used last time, I forget the exact example, but it was an office setting. Let's say I'm in an office and I walk up to Jenny and I'm like, hey, Dave down the hall, do you think he has an affair? Do you think he's having an affair? Now, I can say that with no evidence or grounding to stand on and no idea that Dave is having an affair or not, but now Jenny is going to bring that into question. Now Jenny is going to look for certain cues where she might investigate a little bit, see if Dave is having an affair, or she might just put Dave into this little unconscious category of people who might be having an affair. She assumes that I have some sort of information that she doesn't and now she's on the lookout for it. And just lending attention to it changes her judgment of Dave. So now every interaction that she has with Dave is going to be colored just slightly differently because she has that thing in the back of her mind wondering, oh, is he having an affair? Now this is a negative example, right? You can prime, you can prime with positive examples, you can prime with neutral examples, but regardless, you get the point. Just by bringing up the idea of Dave having an affair, she is going to be thinking about that consciously, unconsciously, subconsciously, whatever. It's going to be in her mind as she goes about interacting with Dave. And her interaction with interactions with Dave are therefore going to change. They might change in a very small way, but they are also they're they're still going to change. So that brings me to lexical decision tasks. So I just read about a study where lexical decision tasks were utilized. And what this study did was they had two random lines of letters. Random letters all in you know two distinct lines. I guess they weren't randomized because they were controlled by the study. But subjects were told to sit down and see if they could spot any words within those two lines of letters. And what they found was subjects were far more likely to spot words within the letters if the words were correlated. For instance, chicken and egg, or bread and butter. They were able to identify the words, or far more likely to identify the words, if two of them were correlated. If they weren't correlated with one another, then it was not as likely that they would even see words in the first place. So what does this tell us? I'm just going to read right off this paper that I wrote. It was found that participants were far more likely to notice words if the two words within were correlated somehow. For instance, bread, butter, or chicken and bird. These findings imply that the triggering of one concept affects later judgments on another. So, priming. Back to priming. In an article that I just read, they mentioned how priming can infiltrate all sources of media, even crossword puzzles. So, for instance, say you're doing a crossword puzzle and the president of the United States, current president, Biden, is brought up. Biden is the answer. Joe Biden is one of the answers. Well, then Joe Biden is going to be in your mind. And perhaps you're reading an article later on that day where it brings into question the president's policies. You might not have even paid attention to that article if you hadn't have even seen Joe Biden's name in the first place. So this just goes to show that priming, even on the small scale, even in terms of a crossword puzzle, can have profound effects because then you are lending your attention. Just by seeing Joe Biden in that crossword puzzle earlier in the day, you are now lending your attention and you are far more likely to draw correlations between that data point, not data point, but that point and several other points throughout the day. I hope that made sense. I don't know if I'm doing the best job of explaining it, but I'm trying my best. I'm learning this as well, so bear with me. Maybe I'll make another video that better clarifies what I'm trying to say here, but bottom line is priming exists, it is evident, it is out there, and it's happening all around us every single day, whether we're being primed by one of our friends, an individual, a stranger, or more likely being primed by the news media. It's all around us. And that's all I got for today. Okay, till next time.